Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. In this video, we're going to be doing some environments, some topographical environments. Now, with what you'll learn here, you'll be able to do something like this, um, or we can do a two-dimensional one, like this. Or we can do just lines. You know, this might be something good for like some sort of fictional user interface. Something that's playing on the background on a computer somewhere. Um, there's really a lot of stuff you can do with it. So let's get started with a new composition. Let's put in a background. Just something, something to look at so it's not just uh, transparent. Now we're going to add this all to a solid layer. So let's grab a new solid. And I'm going to make this just 600 by 600. Let's change the color so we can see it, but it doesn't matter because we're going to add to it some uh, different effects. Now first to this, we want to add some noise. So we go down to noise and grain, turbulent noise. Let's bump the contrast, bring down the complexity, and scale it up in the transform menu. Then after that, let's go to stylize, posterize. And you can see what this is doing is it's taking what was basically infinite, an infinite amount of levels from white to black and turning it only into seven. So it creates these steps. And we can actually change that to, you know, only two levels. Let's go three levels. Now, let's use the effect called Find Edges. That's under the Stylize menu. And I like to search for effects just in help because it just brings me right to it. And then there is that. And that is pretty much what we have going on here. Now, I can also come in here with Blend with Original and kind of bring that a little bit. So we got a little bit of um, the gray coming in and the edges are still there. And to be able to animate something like this, we can change the brightness. We can change the contrast. We can also come in and change the posterized levels to create some kind of cool, interesting map effects. Now that's just the 2D version. Now let's turn this into a 3D version. To do that, I'm going to have first posterized levels set to just two. And I'm going to set this blend with original at about seven. And I'm going to add another effect to this. Let's go down to keying and get extract. And I'm going to extract out the white. Okay. Now, what I want to do is add a new camera and a null object. So let's turn that layer that we added the noise to, 3D, and the null 3D, and connect the camera to the null. That just makes it so it's easier to kind of control the camera. So I'm going to control it through the orientation and rotation of the null object. So we've got kind of this um, almost like a uh, isometric look, but it's really not, but it's close enough. So then what I want to do is I'm going to use the index expression. So as I duplicate these layers, it'll automatically move its position. So first off, I need to add that to position. So I'm going to hit P on the keyboard, brings up position. I'm going to hold down Alt or Option, click on the stopwatch, and let's add an expression. Value plus square bracket 0, 0, 0, index times 5 end with a square bracket. And then actually I didn't I don't want to plus this. I want to subtract this. And as I duplicate these, you can see it starts to build it up. And we got a 3D look. But it's not it's not moving. It's just going straight up. So let's go in and delete all of them except for the very bottom one. I'll actually take this null in this camera and let's move these to the bottom as well. 
So what we want to do is also as it duplicates the index changes we want under the turbulent noise, we want the brightness to change as well. You can see how it the brightness changes like that. So let's go into the brightness and add a similar expression. Value plus index times 5. And let's duplicate that and see how it goes. This is looking pretty cool. All right. So that's kind of the basis of the effect is, is by changing the index um, on some of the things that animates as we duplicate the layers. But what I want to do is I'm going to add some controls to this so that we can do some more to it after the fact. Now the trick with doing lots of layers like this is I don't want to have to go back to every single layer and change things. I want to be able to change them from one spot. And what I'm going to do is just change it from this very first layer that I duplicate. So in order to do that, I'm going to add an effect, expression controls, layer control. And what layer control does is it selects a layer and then I can be able to map my um, expressions through that layer. And because by default it selects the layer it's on, every time I duplicate it, see if I duplicate this, see that says layer one, deep royal blue solid one, duplicate, it's still that, it says, that one says uh, layer two, and this one says layer two as well. So it's pointing to the same layer. So what I want to do is this number five, and that number five, I want to be able to change that afterwards so that I can uh, do some animating. So let's go to effect, expression controls, add a slider control. Let's give this the name of height. Let's duplicate that and give this the name of a slope. And one more position. Okay. Let's set these to the height. Let's set that to two. Slopes set to one. Position can remain at zero. Now what I want to do is under the position of the layer on the where the five is, I'm going to connect that to the height. And then I go at the beginning, move my playhead to, or my cursor right at the beginning where it says effect, hit a period, go back one, so it's before the period, and then pick whip the layer control layer, just like that. And then it puts in the right expression, and what that's doing is it's, it's looking for this slider on this layer. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that effect layer control layer um, with, with the period. Just copy that, put it in your clipboard. And then we're going to do the same thing right here where that 5 is. I'm going to link that to slope. This one is on... Well, I got those linked wrong, don't I? So this one, the height I want to be because I'm on brightness. So brightness needs to be connected to slope. And under the position, that one needs to be connected to height. And we'll paste in that uh, layer effect control with the period before that. And then now what happens, oh, one more thing. Also under brightness plus position and again, add that layer control in front of it as well. Okay. Now as we duplicate these, you can see it's looking a little bit different because I've got different values in here. So let's go down to that very bottom one. Remember, the bottom one is the one where the control is. And I can come up here and lock it so that it's always up. And as I change my height, look at that. I can also change the slope. The higher the number, the shallower the slope. The lower the number, the steeper the slope. So if I bring this to a 1, it's going to be pretty steep. Bring this up to a 5, it's going to be a lot smoother. And then position, 
is going to be just kind of where it is. I can bring it all the way up, smash it against the top, things like that. Let's add some more to it. I'm going to delete all of those layers, bring, leaving the bottom one. And what I want to do, I still have that expression in my clip in my clipboard in my uh, that I've copied. And so under turbulent noise, I want to be able to change some of these things as well. So like contrast, I'm going to alt or option click on the stopwatch and it brings up the expression and all I have to do is go to the beginning, make sure nothing's highlighted and paste that other expression that I've copied before. And if you hadn't uh, kept it in your clipboard, go back and just copy it again. It's the effect layer control layer with the period dot. And then I'm going to do the same thing with under transform. I can go into rotation, go to the beginning, paste, scaling, go to the beginning, paste, complexity, and evolution. So now I can have control all over all of these settings without having to go to every single layer. Before I do uh, the duplicating again, I want to add another effect to this. It's called Bevel Edges, and it's under the Perspective menu. And you can see what it's doing is it adds kind of this bevel to this. Let's go in actually to under Turbulent Noise, under Brightness. Let's bring the brightness down. And under the bevel, I want to rotate this. Basically, I want... Here in the front, I want to have three different colors. So the top and the left and the front, I want them to be different shades, but very similar. And after I rotate it so where, where I want it, then I'm going to change the thickness so it's barely there. And now, when I duplicate this many times, What we got is a different color on the left, different color on the front, different color on top. And then since I still have this locked, I can come in, let's bring the slope, actually maybe the height down. Okay, looking pretty good. I can also come in to Remember to the turbulent noise, and let's change the complexity. Bring that up, and it's going to add a little more um, bumps and ridges to it. Let's bring that way up. Oh, that's a little bit too much, isn't it? Come into the transform. We can rotate. Scale. And it just does it throughout all the layers. It's really kind of a cool way of doing it. Okay, now if we wanted to uh, make this kind of how I did it, did it before in this example, well I guess we should probably change the background so it's not blue. So let's go in, change that to a different color because we're going to have some water in this. Go in and change the contrast make some more spots where there's water to uh, show up and let's bring the position down now with this the way it works the very bottom layer happens to be at the very top so I'm gonna select that top layer I'm actually gonna un unlock it so that I can see this and I'm gonna first just turn off everything oh it's already blue isn't it so then I can come in and change that color so if I hit Command, Shift, Y, it brings up my solid settings. And let's make this a lighter blue color. And then I want to change uh, the other stuff to be kind of a brown or a green uh, to represent land. So then what I'm going to add to this is another effect. I know there's lots of effects. Under Color Correction, Tint, and let's just change the white. kind of maybe this olive green and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to select all of the layers except for the top one and this one up here that we already changed the royal blue one and hit paste 
and it'll paste that effect that I copied onto all the layers. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's add some, just uh, some clouds to this. So I'm gonna just take one of these layers. We'll take the second, not the bottom one, because that's the one with the controls, but the second to the bottom one. Duplicate it. I'm gonna change the color so I can spot it easily. Bring it to the bottom. And let's go in and turn off all these things as well. Okay, I'm gonna just solo this layer. And what I do want, I do want turbulent noise. So let's reset that and take off the expressions. And we're going to make some clouds. So add some contrast. Let's bring the complexity down. And I'm going to add to this just like a rounded rectangle mask. And then in the mask settings, I'm going to feather it and bring bring it in. And you can see there's a little bit of blue fringe because that's what the color of um, the mask is, or the layer. So I'm gonna go into the solid settings, actually make that black, go back into the mask, and I, just, I don't want to have any hard edges. So maybe about like that should do. Okay, let's turn that off. And it's way up there, um, but I want to come into the toggle switches and modes, turn it to not add, but screen, to create some, just some white clouds. And then I can bring this down, kind of right about there. So that's really the tutorial. There's lots you can do with this. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to do this just from a noise layer. If you have some sort of depth map, um, you do have to change it up a little bit um, instead of using, because with the turbulent noise, I use the brightness. So you'll have to add like an exposure effect to your depth map to be able to do that. But it works pretty much the same way. So I hope you learned something cool. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Just put them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.